in the final, that's become tougher. Because they don't know what they're going to have to do. They are given on that day a recipe, written recipe. They've got 45 minutes to read it, digest it, and said, well, I'm ready for it. Let's go. And they've got two hours to make that each. We look for a certain uh, imagination. It's not imitation, imagination, interpretation of uh, the dishes, but classic. It's time to give a chance to a youngster to get on on the ladder of success. And obviously, very important on their CV, when they put winner of the Rue Scholarship, that is worth an ounce of gold. This is a new idea we had this year, to have the two cousins, Mimi from Le Gavroche and Alain from the Waterside Inn, cooking that dish. Because, you know, they've always judged those two. They haven't been cooking. So here is the challenge. The six finalists will have to make a fillet of beef en croûte with a rough puff pastry, pomme de terre duchesse, little lettuce braise with a bernet sauce. To see what we're expecting from our candidate today, I've asked the two cousins to do that dish. I'll leave it to you. Okay, good. That's our puff pastry. I think that the butter needs to be uh, quite cold. It's very cold. Yeah, you know, otherwise it's going to melt totally with uh, the flour, and you, we don't want that. On the day, do you think this is the first job that they should uh, attempt? I would, definitely. And you're using your fingertips as well. It's very, very delicate. Yeah, not the, the middle of the, the hand. You don't want to, to bruise it too much. You, you're really looking to, to flake it. The water. So it's basically bringing it all together, but not yeah. kneading it like a bread. Exactly. That's it. That's ready to roll. That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> so it's even pressure to get it a nice even thickness and to try and get these corners at a right angle and we can see the butter and that's what's going to puff the puff pastry up and give it all that lovely flakiness. So we always brush off the excess flour. If you leave that in there that's going to stop the puff pastry from rising. That's it. That's looking great already. Time to rest. What we're looking for in our finalists is that will and the passion, the desire to win. Of course, on the skill side, they have to be complete. They have to understand pastry work, butchery, sauces, all the technical skills that are required to be a great chef. Well, here we have a fillet of beef and they're gonna to have to know how to trim this properly. It has to be beautiful and round, no waste, no sinew, nothing left on it, but perfect meat. On this side, we've got what we call the chain, which needs to be removed as well, because that's got a lot of sinew in it. I think we could maybe see a few of those chains left on it, and we'll be chewing when we'll be tasting. We don't want to see that. Part of the recipe is a duxel of champignon. And of course, we make our duxel by hand. What I don't want to see on the day is one of our chefs grabbing the machine. It's just not going to work. It's not right. What do you think, Mimi? I think that's good. You've done a good job there. Cheers. Passed. One of the garnishes we want them to do is a, a braised lettuce. But the way to prepare them is obviously to cut the bottom off here, remove the excess leaves, and then we cross the bottom like an endive so that they can cook evenly. And then braised with veal stock. So the lettuce should end up something like this, really beautiful, holding itself, yet tender. Keeping its shape. This is the, the, the pomme duchesse, which is uh, basically baked potato, passed through a moulie, but the secret is not to overwork them. Yeah, otherwise it becomes all elastic, and, and while it's still warm, add your egg yolks, and at the end, we said we wanted to put a little cream. And these are the tartlet moulds, so we need to butter these a bit. So it doesn't, you know, stick to the mould. So, you take a bit of the pomme duchesse and you force it into the tartlet. Just spoon in. I haven't cooked these at Le Gavroche for many, many years, but um, I think they might be on the menu tonight. I need to dole out some punishment to my veg man. That looks like a real painful dish to do. Then the tricky bit is to pipe it on. 
just up and down like that. See, you've done that before. Just a little bit, just a few times. The art of piping, and being delicate, steady-handed, I could do this in my sleep. Perfect. So the beef, lightly seasoned, salt and pepper. Yep. And then we're going to sear it. And the idea is to get a lovely golden colour, but not, not too much. Not too much. You know, by, by searing it, that's, that's the way we keep all the blood to stay in the meat as well. All the flavours will be there. We then put it in the oven for about five minutes and then quickly chill down. Because yep. remembering, it has to be cold before we put it in the puff pastry. That's beautiful. On the day of the final, when you get there, um, it's the most nerve-wracking experience ever. I mean, you sit there in front of all these judges. Um, they give you the give you the dish. You know, you got your time to prepare and write your method, and um, you know, you just you just breaking it really. So the beef, and then we're going to put in the spinach. Yes. And that gives a lovely contrast of colour as well. Cover the beef completely. So the pancakes, and we've cut them. Square. Slightly overlapping. So this is our mushroom duxelle. Yes. And you can't rush this bit. You need, you know, the same amount of the mushroom duxelle everywhere. Otherwise, when you're going to cut the slice, that's going to be, look terrible. And with the scissors, we want to get rid of uh, that excess of pancake. We just want a little leg wash there. Cut that V shape here. So is that going to be long enough? Yes. yes. Perfect. <laughs> Of course, our finalists should know that they have to trim off this excess pancake and puff pastry. Close your eyes. <laughs> so the seal is underneath, so it won't burst open. That's it. We're looking for skill, and on the dish we choose. It's a classic, but modern. So they will still be able, on the presentation, to show something which is their own flair. Because cooking without any bit of a freedom is not cooking. That's a tricky bit. Isn't it? it is. I've, I've not done this since my apprenticeship, and that's a long, long time ago. Can you imagine the finalists? If, if they've got this far, perfect, and then they muck this bit up? If they cut through? Oh. Don't want to think about that. So we put a little chimney in. That's it. Ready to bake? Okay. Looks good. Looks good. I think it looks beautiful. Yeah, well, that's you. I'm the judge. <laughs> Moment of truth. Oh. So, lovely. A little bit of clarified butter to give it some shine. Yes, good. That looks nice. That beautiful. Looks nice. So that's your pomme duchesse, which you've done, obviously. You filled it up with, obviously. Cauliflower puree, yeah. classically done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A classic Bernays with fresh tarragon at the end. Yes. And for me, most importantly, uh -huh. and I know for you as well, we kept the shallots in there. The family has always preferred the testing the shallots lightly cooked as it should be. It looks good. The puff pastry looks superbly cooked, light and fluffy. The duxelle hold beautifully well. The beef is rare and I love it rare. The puree looks nice, the lettuce braids beautifully well. Don't start to think you've done it. You will not be a scholar. <laughs> but you could expect, if you enter in the competition, next year, next year, <laughs> to get there. <laughs> so well done, boys. Now we can see what our scholars are supposed to do. <laughs>